She allowed you freedom, but the freedom was very disciplined. After all, you were studying her technique and then rehearsing with her all day long. So you were moving within a very a clearly defined framework, which was her concept of dance. And I think this is important. When we talk about Martha Graham, people tend to say, oh, I choreographed that solo myself, I did this myself. It's true. We used to contribute a huge amount of work, but the work was in very clearly defined parameters. And it was in her style and in her technique. She would give you a piece of music, uh, tell you where you began, where you finished. You would listen to the music together. She would tell you who you were, what you were doing, why you were doing it. And then she would say, just work on some movement and go out of the room. Not always, but frequently she did leave the room. And you would stand there like an idiot with the pianist and try to make up movement. But eventually you would get a couple of steps or movements that you thought were right. She would come back and then she would say, no, that's not right, but this is. Now, let's go from here. And she would reorganize the material. And then eventually a dance would occur, eventually a dance. And it was very hard to decide or define where your uh, improvisation began and ended and her invention began and ended. So you can't really claim that you did it. We had considerable audiences. Martha had a great deal of personal publicity. People would only come to see what it was because she was so extreme and the publicity was not always good. The publicity was frequently bad, that this was ugly, this was something not dance, this was distorted, this was strange, but it was also sexy, which sold dancing to quite acceptable music. I mean, the music was new, but it was music by Appalachian Spring was there, Every Soul of the Circus was there. There were very entertaining pieces, and the audiences did come. Robin Howard came on the scene when we were in London in 1954. It was a very strange meeting because he purposely, Robin had lost his legs during the war and he was, he was a very tall man and with artificial legs and he purposely met me without any legs on and I'm sure he did this on purpose to test me. He was trying to, I don't know what the, the game was, but I got very angry during the meeting. And I kept saying, I don't know why I'm here. If it's to conv convince you to come, I'm not interested in whether you come or not. It's, it's an extraordinary experience. And if you want to deny yourself that experience, do. And uh, I think he liked that, that I was, very difficult because I felt he was being difficult. And he did come and of course fell in love with Martha and the company and everything. He became a member of our board and then became chairman of the board. Even though he was living in London, he used to travel to the United States. And then in 1962, he helped to organize and helped to pay the way by guaranteeing the loss for the company to return to the Edinburgh Festival. And then season, which was hugely successful in uh, London at the Prince's Theatre. When Robin asked me if I would be interested in setting up a school in the company with him, it was a very difficult decision because I wasn't sure Robin knew what it involved, not having done it. So we had to talk a long time about sorting out ideas about what art was, let alone what dance was. 
And fortunately, we agreed on a huge number of elements. Where we didn't agree, we agreed to disagree. Well, simply that my life now is in dance, my family, as it were, I'm, I'm a bachelor, my friends, my family, my life, what seems to be most important, is all the Contemporary Dance Trust, and we desperately need money for a headquarters, somewhere to work. There were many areas of life. Robin's life was totally different from mine. The only thing we had in common, we had both been in the Army. He was English, upper class. His mother was and father were Lady and Lord Howard. His, his mother's cousin was a member of the royal family. His mother's father was Lord Baldwin, who was Prime Minister of England. He had been to Eton. I came from Brooklyn. Uh, but we agreed enough to actually start the school. I admit I hope that I won't have to sell the things I have kept back. I've kept a few things. This house where we are now, I've got the lease of that subject to the mortgage. And I hope maybe other people will come in now that they've shown that we've shown we're prepared to do enough to help ourselves. But very probably I shall have to sell this thing which is my favorite possession at the moment. It's a Rodin bronze of Nijinsky, and I often think of him as the first modern dancer. Robin had one thing that he said over and over again. He wants the company to be exactly like the Graham Company in uh, intensity, intent, and uh, performance ability, and he wants the company to be at a very high level using the model of the Graham Company, but he wanted it built on love. And I kept saying to him, the two don't go together. You can do it with love, but it can't be built on love. So we had a big disagreement about that, but then in the end I decided I would give it a try, even though I was from Brooklyn to New York, and see if I could build it on love. Robin was a Quaker. It was the way he was brought up. Robin never considered anything worth doing if the doing of it was wrong in any way whatsoever. And that meant if the motivation was wrong or the end result was wrong, he couldn't bear lying, which is why life with the Arts Council was so difficult for him, because the Arts Council lied all the time and he didn't. Ninette Tavawa was the chairwoman of the dance panel at the Arts Council, and uh, we had to go and convince her that we were really worth consideration by the Arts Council for our first grant. Robin uh, knew her, but just, she just thought it was silly to start contemporary dance. And at one point, I got thoroughly irritated and slammed the, gr the, the, slammed the table with my hand and just said, Madam, I just don't understand why you're so against it. It's exactly what you did when you started the Royal Ballet. And she stopped. And she just did that. I understand after we left, she said, Who is that boy? I like him. Robin wanted to have a performance. He booked the Adeline Jenny Theater down in East Grinstead for a performance of a new company. I came, I believe, in March or April of 1967 to teach this group that we're actually going to become the company. After two weeks, I went to Robin and I said, there is absolutely no way that we can perform on the date you set. But what we can do you change the date. I will choreograph a new work. I will bring Noemi Lapsuson and Robert Powell from America to dance. I will dance myself. We will have a work by two of the people in the company. We will rehearse these works all summer long. The company won't know how to dance, but they will know how to dance these works and we can maybe get away with it. It was very successful. 